Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, as you can see, this time I'm looking at a PlayStation 2 um, Slim. So it's pretty scratched up. Um, you might get a replacement case for this. You can get like a you know a shell. Um, I think they cost around I don't know, 10, 15 ish for. You might get a clear one or something like that. I'm not sure. I might just get a black one. Um, no idea yet. Um, I'll have a look around. Um, it looks pretty good. It's in good condition. Um, we've got a slot, you know, a card a flap missing here. Unfortunately, I think unless it's sunk inside, I don't think so. I think it's missing. Um, yeah, other than that, you know, it's just a bit scratched up, but it works. It seems to work. It may need a new laser. I don't know. I've been playing a few games on it. Seems all right. No read problems or anything. But um, yeah, that label's a mistake. Look at that. It's like something's been spilt on it or something. But the first thing I'm going to do with this is just do a bit of a, a tear down here, I guess. Um, from what I remember, I've been in one of these before. I think many, many, many years ago. Although it was the larger one, not the slim. Um, and that's you've got to remove these rubber feet um, in order to get access to the screw mounts underneath. So we'll do that now and we'll have a look inside. So there you go, I'm inside there now. It's well worth going in there I and mean, look at the state. There's uh, clearly um, an awful lot of dirt and stuff in the mechanism and things here, um, all over the bloody place. So um, yeah, and so in order to get the lid off, um, <coughs> I'll just turn it that way, you can see. Um, you have to remove one of the feet uh, in that corner there, uh, there, and there. I think. I think that might not be. I think that one's just like a plastic insert. There's a couple of these little, little plastic bungs, and obviously just two rubber feet. I think in the corners. But as you can see, the top, uh, the top ones there, you don't do. Um, I think those are the ones nearest to the front. So the ones nearest to the back, the ones you do, and then obviously the ones in that sort of, uh, you know, the, those three there, uh, and that one central at the bottom. Uh, I think the board's loose here. Actually, I can feel it's the whole mechanism sort of just coming out there so I can take that out of the case I think now and uh, clean it all up. Um, you can see the inside of the lid here, similar thing, you know there's lots of dirt and stuff inside here so I'll clean that up as well. So there was one screw there, just um, I think it's positioned there, um, just holding it into the bottom part of the case there. But as you can see that's uh, that's come out there now so uh, I'm not sure what this is here. Just looking at that, it's like some sort of module, it says 5 volt DC, is it a battery? Some sort of backup battery or something, a fan, don't know, it looks like there's a fan there, so, um, maybe it's just a fan, yeah, it's blowing over that heat sink there, isn't it, uh, an awful lot of shield in there, somehow needs to come off, uh, although there's not very many screws other than around the heat sink, so that shielding might come off fairly easily, I think, um, it's amazing, compact design there, can't believe how small it is, Anyway, I'll uh, give this a bit of a dust now and uh, take that shielding off, I think. So there you go, I've given it a quick clean. Um, take out these uh, three screws, uh, then the fan comes off. There's a load of crap under the fan, inside the fan. So that's that done. Um, and on the DVD drive, um, yeah, you've got three screws there and one in the corner. So different, you know, that, that, that one's sort of in, in set. You probably need to use a jewellers to get in there, whereas you can use a normal screwdriver on the other three. Um, but then the ribbon here is taped to the metal part, so you can only, you've got to sort of disconnect it here, down here, and so you can sort of lift it up like that to clean underneath and stuff, but ultimately you'd have to rip the, uh, you know, put some sol you know, some ice prop or something under the ribbon there, just and very, very carefully peel it off, um, you know, perhaps glue it down again to replace it, but I don't want to do that. Um, there's a bit of corrosion started there, so I'm just going to clean that up with a wire brush and just put a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of ice prop on there, but um, I'm not going to strip it down further at this stage, I probably will do later and that will be a subsequent video um, because I want to fit uh, a pick chip to this to disable the uh, protection, um, but I'll do that at a later date for the moment, like I say, I'll just finish cleaning the underside of this now, just give this a wipe down and treat that bit of rust um, and then reassemble it and I'll show you it running. So as you can see that's working, so we'll just pick English. Sticks automatically on analog, presumably because it's not PS2. Yeah, no memory card, that's okay. So I can snip this. Okay, no. Track another car, I think. Uh, 
let's go in close. Let's go for that. Texture and stuff lights, so I was going to just get on a PS3 or Xbox 360 or whatever the latest culture, uh, PS4, Xbox One. It's still bloody good. It really is. It's a lot of light still to be uh, run out of the PS2, I'm sure. Change the uh, view. Anyway, I'll clean the case up now and uh, I'll just show you the end result. I don't think it's going to come out that very well, that will well really, because there's a lot of scratches um, on there and I don't think the plastic pulse is going to remove them uh, the back deep. We'll keep it going So, there you go, all cleaned up. You can see the, crap, the scratches still, some pretty nasty um, long, long scratches and things on that all over the thing but uh, yeah it's as clean as it's going to get um, as I say at some point I'll uh, probably get a new shell for this um, perhaps a transparent one or something anyway one thing I thought I'd show you um, this recent pickup um, the parents found me on a cabo sale uh, PS2 um, works fine but I've discovered a fault a uh, sort of hidden fault um, just left this game playing uh, this game, this disc was perfect and you can see you can see this little ring around the outer edge there and you can see a little bit where I've cleaned it up here it comes off with plastic cleaner so it's not a permanent scratch as such, the game still works flawlessly. Um, but I'll need to clean that up, you know, complete cleaning that up and just give it a bit I've already done another going over with the plastic polish and that'll get off that mark. And there's one or two of the discs, there, there should have been a telltale sign really that came with this that have got similar marks around there. Um, and it's this, there's a white little mark on there, you can tell that's what's happening is when the laser's in a certain position here, that this, the, the cable is just floating up a bit and making contact with the disc as it spins around so ultimately you're going to destroy the cable um, and your disc if you're not careful so um, simple solution to this is to take it to bits um, clean the metal shield in there with some isoprop behind it um, and then use some pretty strong adhesive tape put your head all the way down to the bottom there and tape it all the way so it can only you know it can only come up a certain distance I think what's happened over time um, a movement is the glue's freed up and the, 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 the cable there has just freed it, you know, moved its way up. But basically, but using some strong adhesive tape, um, I should be able to sort of pin it back to about that position there, and then it'll, you know, you've still got uh, movement there um, and it shouldn't protrude. So I'll give that a go now. So use a bit of ice prop, perhaps on a cotton bud or something, just to clean this area here. Um, at some point, you do that because whatever you stick on here, you want it to make a really, really good. Um, you know, join with the surface. Um, perhaps use something to dry it with as well. Just give it a gentle wipe there. So, and then as I say, make sure your head, as the laser head assembly there, is all the way down. And then we're going to stick some double-sided tape underneath to pull it into approximately that position there. So, all I'm going to do is stick this um, under there like that. That's it. Press it down. Make sure it's. Uh, it's stuck on there as, as much as it can be and then obviously you want to peel the thing off now this is going to be the tricky bit because it's never easy to get the thing off this so I'll do that off camera I think and then finally uh, as I described sort of push your uh, ribbon down you might want to do this from sort of the inside just use something to help you do it and then perhaps you know just put a bit of pressure on there you don't want to crease the thing too much you just want it to make a nice join with as much of that as possible. Uh, and that should do the trick as the laser moves forwards and backwards. You've not got quite as much play there in the height. And that should do the trick, I think. 
but uh, we'll give that a try now. I've got to do one more thing while I'm here, and that's to put a piece of sellotape just under uh, this piece of ribbon here, and you know, extend it to the sides, just to give it a bit of an extra support there, so that it doesn't just peel back off. So, similar thing as before. Um, the difference here, I'm going to just move the head back a little bit to give myself a bit of uh, leeway here to try and get this sellotape through. Um, should be a good position, I think, and then just push it down like so. That should just hold it in place, and obviously you've got full travel there, so that's good. Ultimately, it's going to need new laser probably because of the ribbon is going to wear out. Maybe even the, that's the bend, the fold bit will break. Maybe the bit that's been damaged will ultimately fail. No idea, but so I'll reassemble that now. So in terms of getting marks off the discs like this, and this applies to any scratch on any disc really, um, Xbox 360 spring to mind really, the older revisions where you have this problem. Um, yeah, just put some of this and just and go around in a circular motion there with something soft. Yeah, this is perhaps isn't the best thing to use. Maybe some cotton wool or something that's extremely soft, and just go round and round and round in circles around that area um, very gently. I would probably clean it with soap and water first just to make sure you've not got any particles on it because the last thing you're going to do is rubbing a bit of plastic or a gritter uh, a bit of grit or something around because you'll scratch it worse but um, this is basically the way you do it and if you use this Meguiar's plastic stuff or something similar, something that's designed for polishing PVC and plastics you'll find you get um, the little scratches off there without a problem and in this case the, the, the white mark there is mostly um, sort of plastic coating, particles of plastic from the uh, ribbon um, and it's a similar thing with other similar types of scratches like so coming back to the Xbox 360 and the problem they had with scratch discs in the early days you know the disc was scratching on the tray there um, so it's a similar thing, you got you know particles, I mean it's still damaged, you still can make little grooves and scratch physical scratches in the disc but you'll find for the most part something like this that's lightly abrasive uh, very 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 fine, I don't know how many particles it is, uh, per million or whatever, it's very very fine um, you'll find, I mean you can see here the area I've gone over, can you see there's no marks at all, it's gone so by the time I've uh, cleaned this with some soap and water um, it uh, should look pretty good, and I'll show you another disc in a minute because the other one's really 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 bad, it's Gran Turismo 4 I think it is, it might be 3, I can't remember which, one, which one's this uh, this one's Gran Turismo 4, 3 I've got Gran Turismo 4 and that's really scratched up so we'll see what, what difference uh, this makes to that but you know just do this for you know maybe 5 five or 10 minutes just go round and round and round so all the polishes start to dry up and stuff and disappear um, and then the final step just put it in the sink put some washing up liquid on it uh, put it under the warm tap and just you know let the washer and rub the washing up liquid with your finger around in circles until you'll feel it go squeaky and you can tell it goes mega 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 clean you get any oils and things off it um, and then just depth you know uh, you know so I blow the particles of water off it um, and then I use uh, something really soft just to dab dry it don't sort of rub in circles especially if you're using something that might be uh, sort of semi abrasive like cake, paper towel I wouldn't use that um, just maybe some toilet paper or something like that uh, but as you can see this is coming out really well so I'll show you the end result of that in a second as I say we'll look at the other disc in a minute so hopefully you can see there with a bit of elbow grease um, it comes off uh, I could get that a little bit better you know there's still very faint remnants of it there you can perhaps see but you know trust me this is the same disc I've just been using uh, and you can see the majority of the uh, ever, you know that mark there's just gone completely so I'll have a look at the other disc now so here's the Gran Turismo 4 disc um, that wasn't working uh, look at the state of that um, yeah that should have been the telltale sign pick up a system and you get a disc like this um, start looking at the uh, you know the CD assembly there just to see if it's catching on something uh, in particular the ribbon so I'll give that the treatment now and we'll do a, have a look at it after it's done so hopefully you can see this, it's not perfect, uh, there's a couple of nasty looking scratches on there but it's considerably better than it was, um, it's only when you get it in the really, you know, the right light there where you can just see the faint traces of the ring all the way around, uh, but this now works perfectly. Uh, so yeah, really pleased with that, so 
Um, something else you can use as well, I've just given it a code T-Cut as well. Uh, all stuff for cars, this. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.